little negative right now, and I apologize. I'm just being really honest. I thought the Super Bowl's commercials were just not as great as past years. Kind of felt like people were being lazy, playing off the whole COVID thing a little too much. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, you have to, like, fit the script of, like, what's going on in the world. But I definitely will – I don't know. It's kind of just like – it's kind of a bleh year for me, personally. My personal thing. Um, the weekend performance. What do you think? I mean, what a show, right? Who, who thinks – what do you think? A thumbs up, thumbs down on the weekend's Super Bowl performance. I know you watched Even if you didn't watch the game, I know you watched it. Lexi, you liked it. Nicole, you weren't digging it. Why not, Nicole? Cody, you were digging it. Lexi, you were digging it. You didn't dig it, Jameson? All right, here's my thing. Like, I think it was – cool i think it was good but it definitely i don't know if it was at the level we could have expected right i mean this is this is 2021 at the super bowl one of the only events that took place that has taken place in almost a year you know what i mean the one of the only major scale events while i do think the performance was epic it was cool um i definitely would have liked to have seen a little bit more um you know Sort of like the 3D visual. I mean, you know, they had the cool cities that he. ran through I'm trying to articulate with my words it just felt like this outside event like it didn't feel like it was in that stadium and it didn't feel um like they really capitalized off the energy that was in the stadium and you know the the super bowl was one of the first events in in um months that has been able to have a capacity of 25,000 people. There were 25,000 fans at uh, Raymond James Stadium. So I don't know. Personally, I think they could have done better. But again, you know, I love The Weeknd. Um, one of the most underrated artists, obviously, because the Grammys didn't nominate him for anything. Which it, Well, they nominated him, but he didn't win any, which is crazy to me. Um, so definitely a well-deserved performance, a well-deserved slot for the weekend. Um, but uh, definitely, I don't know if it was up to par with uh, what we could have expected. Is anyone from Tampa, by the way? Put a put a Tampa in the chat if you're from Tampa, because I got questions. If you got to go out there and see that or even just be in the community. I had some friends that were, uh, were running around there and, and uh, it just seemed like an absolute zoo. Um, <clears throat> Besides that, Miley's Super Bowl tailgate performance with Billy Idol, I heard was absolutely phenomenal. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't watch it. I was doing other stuff at that time. Um, other news and entertainment before we get into the topic today, which is how to win your day. How to win, 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 win. You know, like DJ Khaled. That's all we do is win. Um, we're going to talk to Melly B and Grand Finale about that. Uh, but first, Bow Wow is joining the WWE. What? Killy's like, yes, Bow Wow, we love you. I loved Bow Wow back in the day. Um, but I got to say, I was shook when I found out that he's like trying to get into the WWE. Listen, not only was I shook, but I was like, if I, if I could watch any rapper like get mauled by some wrestler, listen, it's going to be Bow Wow. And here is why. Because Bow Wow has this untouchable ego and he forgets that he's like a child star, right? Like, did anyone see the video that went viral of Bow Wow? I want to say it was on Vine, right? I think it was Vine. Throwback, shout out Vine. Um, he was like walking behind a group of high school girls with a hood on, right? And he's like, these, have, these girls have no idea that I'm right behind them. And like, if, if you saw this video, you know, you will remember this. But he literally was like making it a big deal. He's like, yeah, there were no Bow Wows behind them. I'm just like, bro, like, no one thinks about you like that. Like... No, not only that, but like, I honestly don't think, I think most of those girls are probably too young to even, you know, remember when you were like in the Jimmy Neutron soundtrack. Um, <laughs> so shout out Bow Wow. Um, if he gets in the, uh, if he gets on, on WWE, listen, I will become a wrestling fan overnight. All right. That's just how it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, on the brighter side of things, 25,000 fans at the Super Bowl. Does that mean we can get playlist? Cause they're both in Florida. So I'm thinking we can. Um, whew, that was breathy. A lot of, a lot of Super Bowl talk. I gotta say, it's like that one event of the year that just, you know, you can't get away from, even if you're not a sports fan, it's in front of your face right here on Chuff FM. Um, so we're going to bring Grand Finale in first and, uh, Grand Finale is a super, super inspiring person. Um, this guy, 
I, I really can't say I know a ton about him as a human, uh, but I do know the energy that he puts out in his streams. And every time I go to Grand Finale stream, this guy's got someone on and he's talking about something that they're building, you're working on, you're, you're organizing, you're getting your life on track. Like there's always this like forward positive momentum in his streams. He had me on for an episode of his uh, Winner's Wednesday, which he does, where he basically brings people on to his streams um, to talk about what you know, what winning means to them and, and uh, different ways that you win throughout your day and throughout your life. So, you know, I thought this would be a perfect topic to do for Chuff FM this week. And I figured uh, Grand Finale and Melly B would be two of the most perfect people to have on it. So Grand Finale, if you want to request that box, and uh, real quick, I just had this random thought today, um, and I was like, how am I going to tie this into my show? And here's how. Like, like winning is so important, right? Like, you got to win in life. You got to at least strive to win in life. It's not always the number one thing, but you got to strive for it in order to, like, progress, right? And one way that totally just counter counteracts winning is if you're one of those types of people who goes in... Um, <laughs> If you're one of those types of people that goes into a, a public restroom and just sets your butt cheeks right on the seat, <laughs> like with no sort of like protection or like layer <laughs> or anything, it's hard to be a winner if you do that. It's hard to be a winner if you set your butt cheeks right on the toilet seat like that because it's just so germy and, and, you know, clean is what wins, not germy, not dirty. <laughs> but I know Grand Finale doesn't do that. Grand Finale, you don't set your butt cheeks right on the seat like that, right? And, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to stay away from that. Gonna, We're not going to talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> I would take it a step further, but I, I'm feeling like you're not wanting that. So we're going to, we're going to pump the brakes <laughs> on it. What's up, bro? How are you? <laughs> Yo, chop, chop. What's going on, fam? <laughs> Uh, I'm living the dream, man. Just out here, you know, having some Monday night fun and uh, trying to get through this tundra that we got going on in Michigan. It's like eight degrees right now here. Oh, wow. I think we're about 22 here in New York City. About, yeah, about 22. 22, man, that's like toasty. Compared so, to you, for sure. <laughs> so what's the vibe out there right now? Like sledding around and, and you know, oh, taking man. it to the streets? Bro. It's 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 an ice skating rink all over this city, man. It's an ice skating rink. It's very slippery. Everything is uh, turned to ice at, at the moment. See, that's tough in New York too, because you gotta walk everywhere, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I take public transportation, so you know, you know, I, I uh, you know, definitely have to be careful when you're out there in the streets. Um, you know, to the bus and to the train. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. So, so give us a little rundown. Like, who who are you, bro? Who am I? Who I are am, you, bro? I'm just a regular dude from Brooklyn that's excited about life and, and just like really in love and fascinated with people. Um, you know, that, that, that's who I, who I would say I am. I'm very uh, passionate about passion. Um, I'm someone that gets excited if I see somebody passionately handing the cashier, passionately DJ, DJing like yourself. Um, I'm someone just, just as excited about, about passion. I feel like everything we do, we should do it with all of our heart because I mean, why, why hold back? Why, why hold back? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I mean, I think when you, when you point to anything that's like great in the world, right? Like amazing inventions, amazing pieces of art, amazing music, like almost everything that's great is like fueled by passion, right? Sure. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, simply, I, I would just, I would just say somebody that that just uh, is in in love with life, in love with people. I just, I enjoy people. Like I'm just fascinated by every 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 person I meet. There's something to to learn from everyone. I heard someone say a quote that every man is my teacher. Every man is my teacher. Ooh. That could be woman, child, you know, whatever. I like that right there because you can learn something from literally everyone. Like, and they don't even sometimes they don't even have to say a word, right? True, true. So are you as passionate about winning as you are about people? Or does it kind of just, do, do the, the passions somehow collide? Um, um, I think, you know, I found like being like, 
compete against that would determine my level of passion. You know, um, mm -hmm. not to be arrogant, sound cocky, or arrogant, but if I felt like if I had a, a higher skill level than another individual, I would not perform at at, at, a, at a high level. But if I saw someone that I knew was better than me, it, it, it would, would turn my competitiveness up to another level, you know, so. That's interesting. So you like, you, you like saw the challenge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I saw somebody like somebody that I knew that was very good, it just would up my game up another level. If if I in my mind didn't believe that this person was up to part in skill, I would not give. I wouldn't have that competitiveness. I would like hold back. It does if it makes sense. No, no, that totally makes sense. Cause I feel like I feel like it's kind of like the situation, like the pressure's on. You know what I mean? It's like um, I I equate it to like so I'm a I'm a diehard skateboarder right so i think of it like you know if i'm skating in front of someone who's like super good it's like you almost get like this adrenaline rush to like to, to really give it your all you know what i mean and i feel like in a lot of ways that's like such a crucial piece to the puzzle when it comes to like really getting what you want in like the big picture mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean for me personally i don't know it just was something about that when i seen someone that was like better than me in something and I mean, I just felt like to step up to the challenge. But I think the declining, like going lower, I think that has something to do with ego and arrogance, I guess. Yeah, I think I think that was like being, you know, dealing with ego and just being arrogant. Man, I feel like ego is like the number one thing that that when imbalanced, like triggers just just the complete opposite reaction of what you want out of life. It's like if you come, if you step in with an ego in any situation, it like automatically puts this barrier between you and the other person. It's kind of weird. It, it, well, it does because people begin to hate you, um, like resent you. Resent you would be the right word. Resent you because you have this high view of yourself. When I was younger, that was my mind state on a basketball court, and um, people they they you become a, a disgusting uh, person to them, and um, that that's not pleasant at all. I like to. I, I, I know I can't please everybody, but I like to be on good standing with people. When I was younger, I didn't care. So I'm going to share mine with you in a sec, but I want to know yours. Like, how, how do you, you go about winning a day? Like, what what do we go? Like, you can obviously summarize it, you know, but start to finish. Like, what are the, what are the quick plays, like the quick hits, the spark notes of like your day when you have winning as a, a forward front, if that's even something you do? Well, well, for me personally, um, the thing that puts me in the mindset of win the day, because I'm a type of person, I'm excited when a new day happens. I'm excited because it gives me an op another opportunity to inspire somebody, to encourage somebody, to love somebody. Um, and I know when it comes to winning the day, it's really based on what's important to you as an individual. You know, determine on what's important to you will determine how you, you, you focus your direction towards your day. And um, for me, it's, um, you know, li living to the fullest. And I believe life, life is, a, is about uh, two things, God and people. So people are a big place with me. So being able to impact someone, inspire someone, make somebody laugh, make somebody smile, like that's a big part of winning the day for me as an individual. But on a personal level, getting my exercise in, um, getting my personal time in, you know, prayer and reading, um, those things. Like if I fulfill those things in the morning for myself, I feel like I've won the day. You know, if I had that time for myself, that tends to my mind, my body, and my spirit. So that's winning the day for me is, is, is tending to those, those three main areas for myself. And then when I'm able to connect with people, that would be, would be next. I love that. Yeah, it's good that it came in three, too. That I feel like that's such a good way to, like, stay rounded. You know what I mean? Life oh, series of threes. Yeah, that's, that's how I normally set up a lot of things in threes. Usually, you know, if, if like a thought, like even some of the things you, you, you asked us to think about today, I was thinking about threes. Um, added, I was thinking about, I think something you mentioned about like preparing for the day. Oh, no, there's something else that you'll bring up and I'll answer it when you bring it up. For sure. No, I love that. Um, yeah, like some random things that I feel like helps me win my day is uh, just simply like waking up early. Like, uh, um, I think I talk about, talked about this a little bit like last week in my show, but um. I've been waking up at 6 a.m. every day just because like I just started one day setting an alarm and then I let my sleep schedule adjust and now it's been like 
oh man, it's been like two and a half weeks now or three weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. I think when we talked was actually, uh, so I was on uh, Grand Finale's Winning Wednesday show. What was it now? Two weeks ago? Um, yes. And I think that was like the, the second week that I was into it. And now it's like a whole other week feeling like money. Um, and it's, it's overall, like weirdly enough, I think taking those hours in the day to like focus on what I have going on in my life and like not putting work first, not putting like the, the messes I have to deal with first or like, you know, whatever, like, like literally taking an hour to like hang out, write in my journal a little bit and just like, you know, do stuff for me. Me, like not even social media or anything like just do things for me like listen to music and chill i don't know man it's it's changed my whole outlook on the day and i feel less pressed like when people come to me with tasks or um fires to put out essentially you know that happens a lot when we're at work and things like that you know you got a, an issue you got to deal with or a new project that comes up it's like um i would find myself getting stressed in those situations or tense mm -hmm. and uh fondly enough now it's like I feel so much more relaxed. I don't know if it's because I'm taking that extra time, but it's been such a crucial piece of the puzzle, really feeling like I'm winning my day. Yo, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember when you came to my uh, stream and shit that you were say, telling us how uh, getting up earlier. And that's definitely, I believe that's essential to winning your day. I know a lot of people are not morning people. And I'm like, hey, hey, snap out of it, man. Um, for me, morning is like where it begins. I love it. I love it. I'm happy for you, y'all. Definitely, man. Definitely. No, I appreciate it. And, uh, dude, I'm, I'm excited and I'm inspired to see, uh, what you've got going on in your stream. You know, you always keep such a, such a high energy. Um, what are some things like, you know, you hope that people get from the different shows you do, you know, you, cause you obviously you have a, like a, you know, the reason I picked you for this topic is, is cause you have like, to be honest, I kind of stole the topic from you. I almost feel like, cause you have such a, a winner's mindset thing going on in your stream. And I was like, this fits so good. Um, but tell me a little about, a about like what you hope people can can grab from that oh man um well we do morning mows which is short for morning motivation i always like to try to like chop stuff up so i call it morning mow and uh, essentially morning mow is the hope to ins inspire people or energize them in their day so the way we go about trying to um accomplish that is by you know when i when i share it i share it with a lot of energy and we also have rock out moments which is called a ROM. I call it R-O-M, rock out moments. And those rock out moments is more like a commercial break where we throw on the track and we we just we just get it, we get we get at it. We get oh. at it. And sometimes I keep going to the point where morning mo is off hold. But in morning mo, I share what a rhino mentality is, and then I give some uh, uh I call it the other day rhino rundown. And the other day rhino rundown is like a word of the day, a quote of the day, scripture of the day. I give uh, financial advice of the day, and in, with any advice that I give. I am not a expert in any of these I things. Was, bro. <laughs> I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not the same. <laughs> I'm not an expert in any of these things. The whole purpose is to stimulate something in the listener. Because there's a there's a lot of people that I'm sure come through my stream that um are experts in these things. So I never claim to be an expert. What I'm bringing is the energy behind the message. Okay. So uh, you know, so I, I think you know a lot of a lot of the stuff that I'm sharing is not it's not like people never heard it before. Is is just I think the the energy that is is what diff is different behind it. That's all. But sure. it's just to inspire people. And quick winner Wednesdays is to bring out the winner in you. So I bring stories of people that's winning in some particular area aspect of life, and they share their story with the hope to inspire something in the people that are listening. Which is like the goal for all of us, right? Like everyone wants to win, right? Put put a smiley face in the chat if you want to win, like in your day. Uh, let me find a smiley face. <laughs> no, I love that though. I love that. And I love the rock out moments because uh, I think that that free flow that you your brain gets into when you're you know really in with a good song, like mentally, you know, you're you're vibing as the kids say. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's so like it's such a freeing feeling that you know I think is a really crucial part to to the whole piece of the puzzle when it comes to like striving for things and uh, breaking down some of the barriers like of stress and of uh, you know, the tensions in the day to, to kind of leverage yourself up towards those things. Cause like life is crazy, yo. Like we go through so much every day and I, I noticed this as something that's like vital for me. And I, I asked around, like a lot of my friends don't really do this, but even like, this sounds so simple, but like before you do something like, taking literally 30 seconds to catch your breath, right? Like say you're going to work 
are going to school and you get to the parking lot, right? And you park your car or, you know, maybe someone drops you off. Um, taking 30 seconds, whether it's in your car or, or like on feet or on foot when you're walking in to just stop and just like draw attention to your breath and, and like there's be in the moment for a second, right? I feel like if we can do little things like that, coupled with having moments of, you know, really getting into our favorite music, coupled with like, you know, all the other things that we mentioned, it's like, I feel like all these are like little sugars and spices into this like amazing chili of life that we're like trying to brew up right now. You know what I mean? Like it's such a good way to just, just uh, like balance yourself. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree totally that, that especially that breathing part, but taking time because I know we go, we run through the day and especially like when you live in a city, um, you find yourself always on go, 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 go. And, and, and hardly ever take time to just like, like I'm saying like even five seconds of that is so like um, refreshing and, and yeah. it's good. Should we all do it together on the stream right now? All right, if you're watching this, <laughs> let's do it. This is going to be, this is uh, meditation with Grand Finale on Chaff FM. I promise we're going to have a lot of more action-packed stuff coming up in a sec. <laughs> Melly B is going to be on. We got some stories to tell. I met my new neighbors in the worst way possible. You're going to want to stick around to figure out how that happened. But first, <laughs> shall we, Grand Finale? All right, deep breath. Everybody in with me now? <sighs> Hold it. Hold it. Ah, let it out. Let it out. Let it out. One more. Let's do it through the nose this time. In through the oh, nose oh, on three. One, two, three. I sniffed my microphone a little bit. Could you tell? Hold it. Ah, let it out, baby. Feel good. Get in that winner's mindset tomorrow. Do it today if you got time still. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Grand Finale, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I appreciate, appreciate you big time. Bro. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a pleasure. No doubt, no doubt. Everyone show Grand Finale some love. Get in that winner's mindset with my guy. He does all kinds of amazing stuff on his stream. Uh, one thing I really strive for on the show is to get um, guests that are like interesting and cool to me. Um, you know, Obviously, if you've been following the show for a while, you know, we don't just get people that are like, you know, uh, number one on the app or, you know, you know, on the top page all the time. You know, we get we get people that are just cool and interesting. And, you know, sometimes they happen to be, you know, in the top and sometimes they happen to be, you know, just on the grind, just like all of us. But uh, I'm really excited that Grand Finale was able to be here today. Melly B coming up next. Hi, everyone in the chat, by the way. I'm Chaw. For anyone new joining, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I see Leah, Tigger, Hoops. I see Corey. What's up? I know Melly's in here. Ryan says, I suck. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you. Haters are my motivators. And uh, if there's one thing that we can take away from Chaw FM, it is that. Um, really quick, before Melly B comes in the box, um, I want to share a quick story that happened yesterday. And let's just say uh, it was a win in its own way, right? Sin Man, thank you. Uh, it was a win in its own way. Thank you for everyone showing love, by the way. I see all of you. Um, I, as you may or may not know, have made the plunge into adulthood, and I purchased a home on Friday. Wow, crazy stuff. I'm not there yet. The next show for Chaff FM will be in the new studio there. So um, if you want to watch a train wreck unfold as we try out not only a new Wi-Fi network, but a whole new space, a whole new... Uh, I got I to gotta redo all of the cool stuff that makes this work. Um, if you want to see the train wreck unfold, be here next week, Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. But um, So I get into this new place, right? And, you know, I'm slowly but surely moving in. I'm still not fully moved in, but I was there, you know, over the weekend moving stuff in. And, you know, I'm new. I'm the new guy. I don't know anyone. I don't know the neighbors. I don't know anyone. So I met one neighbor. They seemed all right, but they were, like, super, super old, like, probably in their 70s or 80s, which was fine. And, you know, shout out to them. Um, and then, so my house is kind of, like, it's off the road. Duh, it's off the road. Most houses are off roads, but it's off the road or whatever. And uh, my trash cans are like out by the road. Um, I promise this story is not going to be too long. We're going to bring Molly B in in just a sec. But I'm running out to these trash cans <laughs> to throw my trash away. And it's icy. I live in Michigan. It 
is, I want to say nine degrees right now. And it was like 10 that day. So there's a car like slowly creeping up as I'm opening my door to put my trash out by my cans. You might see where this is going. I did a little hop over a snow mound and I landed on some ice. <laughs> And in front of my new neighbors, before I even got to say hi, my name is Choff. I'm your new neighbor. The entire car full of them, I'm talking loaded car, four people. Like, I don't know if I assume mom, dad in the front, two kids in the back. I'm assuming that's what they were. Um, they watched me eat it on the ice um, so bad that. I have this nasty, I'm not even going to show you because it's gross. I have a nasty scabbed bruise. Um, my feet went straight up from under me and I just went straight down. And my neighbors laughed at me and I don't even know their names. But all I know is now they're forever going to be the neighbors that bullied me on my first day in the home. So I had to get that off my chest. I forgive them for warning. I forgive them. And the only person that can make me feel better about that is, is someone who's going to help me talk about winning and talk about being awesome. And this is just a, a freaking genius of a human. So we're going to bring her in here right now. Melly B on Chuff FM. This is exciting. No, Rin, they didn't ask if I was okay. And thank you, Cinnamon. It was very slippery. Hello, lovely Melly. <laughs> Bo gang. Oh, goodness. More like a bow army. It was like that yesterday. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to lie. It was like that in Idol Stream yesterday. I was like, I'm, I haven't seen that many bows ever since the rundown, ever since season six of Beat Me's Got Talent. <laughs> and now yeah, it's a big feature. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this bow army in here. Now we, it's like everywhere you go, they just follow. I love I, that. I actually, all of my bows are on display finally, so I stopped um, procrastinating on that. Whoa, so wait, before we get into the topic, wait, you said all of your bows are on display. Can we can we get like a 30-second tour of, of Melly's bow cabinet? I feel like this is MTV yeah. Cribs. I know, right? Like if, if Melly had an MTV I'm Cribs actually, episode, it would be like, all right, these are I'm my actually, bows. Actually, I'm missing two of them. The rest are up, uh, the, two, the two of them are upstairs, but... These are my go-tos wow. that I wear. Um, so how many bows? How many bows are in your collection? Seventeen. I need to get. I guess I need to get seven more because I might hit my twenty-five tonight. So you you buy these or you make these or a mixture of both? I purchased them. You so purchased them. It's a JoJo. So it's a JoJo Siwa bow. She was on the reality TV show called Dance Moms. She just came out and she fully supports the LGBTQ community. She just I announced that. that. Yeah, she just announced That's that she really, she loves her girlfriend with all her heart. And I'm just, I'm so, I'm so thankful that I get to not only represent her brand on this platform, but I also you know, fully support the LGBTQ community. So <laughs> totally. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I saw that too. That's like a big moment. Um, when someone like her, because she's kind of like the modern day child star. Like I, um, when I was doing radio, uh, well, I still do radio, but when I was doing radio with a, a different station, um, she came to our town with, for like her tour and it was crazy. Like oh being downtown because the, the arena was like right in the downtown area where I worked and uh, being downtown that night that that happened, it was like hundreds of little kids running around. Um, and it was honestly like it was, it was cool because, you know, most shows are. Like, you know, adult crazy, someone who has that younger fan, you know, being a, a torch. Bear fur. Always been a fan of hers. Um. Well, I um. I think I bought. Uh. I don't even know why. Well, actually, for work, I used I used to put my hair in a ponytail, and the bow used to sit all the way back here. If I just by the end of the week, I'm a teacher, so I I get kind of tired, so I don't really want to do my hair anymore. So I used to just throw it up in a bun, and I would just stick the bow all the way in the back, and then 
one day I had a bad hair day when I was new back in May 2020, and I just stuck one here, and someone came in, and they were like, hey, I like it. You should keep it that way. And I'm like, Ooh. I don't know. I think it just makes me look a little bit too young. But they said, just keep it in there. Trust me. And here we are now. <laughs> and it became your thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like, so important, though, I feel like, to, you know, you, you have, like, a – it's, like, a staple. It's, like, your – thing now it's like you you adopted it so that's so cool so did i hear you slip in there saying you're a teacher i am yes whoa, whoa, whoa okay okay so you're winning all these meet me competitions you're a top streamer on here you're in school i'm, I'm pretty sure we talked about right you, you also study yeah i actually just had finished um two chapters tonight <laughs> and you're a teacher yeah all right, Melody, um, you're, the, you're the perfect person to have to talk about winning. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, man. Um, what was our theme tonight? Was it beating against all odds? What was it? Oh, uh, we're talking about winning the day. Oh, okay. Winning the day. And winning in life and just winning in general. Like, it, it's so broad, you know what I mean? But I think, like, getting in the right mindset to, to win is, like, kind of what sets the scene for all these different um, accomplishments and, and moments. You know so what I, I mean? think, guys, thank you. Um, let's see. So I, I know you have, so like, would, go ahead. Oh, I was thinking about, because um, I had written some bullet points down, but now I'm trying to think, like, if it goes with it. Um. I feel like we'll make it go with it. Go ahead, go ahead and run with it. Um, so as far as winning goes, uh, I think I, uh, so from one to three years old, I, I grew out of seizures eventually. And I call this winning at life per se. Um, and I, I had seizures for three years, and my final one at three years old um, was a really bad one. And um, the doctors gave me some very strong, it was like medication mixed with, I, I don't know, some sort of a steroid, and I ended up in a coma. Oh, wow. And uh, the doctors came to my parents in the waiting room and they said, you need to call your church because there's no chance that she's going to make it. We don't, oh my gosh. we don't think Whoa. she's going to make it. Um, and at the time, um, my brother and sister were in a choir in middle school and back in the old days, instead of raising your voice as a choir director, um, the pastor had a whistle around his neck, like on a chain. And I used to like playing with the chain because, spoiler alert guys, I have ADHD and I have sensory issues. <laughs> so sometimes that means you're very tactile and you like kinetic things um, and you like to fidget a lot. So mm. um, every time I would be at the church, I used to play with the whistle chain and apparently, um, when I was almost gone, he, the pastor came in and he said a blessing and he said a prayer. And then the last thing he said was, um, this is the first time I'm using my actual name, which is kind of crazy. Um, obviously you all know my nickname is Melly on here. So I kind of have a double life. <laughs> Um, but he said, Melanie, I need you to do me a favor and wake up and open your eyes. Whoa. If you want, if you want this whistle. And I woke up. Whoa. He knew you wanted the whistle. Yeah. And that pulled so you I'm out of it? And that pulled you out of it? Yeah, apparently I just was like that. <laughs> um, so my that's part one of winning at life. 
Well, that's that's a really interesting point too because if we zoom out on that situation a little bit, I mean, it's a it's a basic incentive reward type of thing. You know what I mean? I mean, I know it's a lot deeper than that because it's literally we're talking about life and death here, but it's a very similar situation to where when you you know, tell yourself that if I work extra hard today, I get to go get ice cream, right? It's like something, it's, it's a, a point of gravitation. It's like something was pulling you out of that. It happened to be the whistle. Just like when you have a lazy day, that ice cream, you know, is maybe going to push you through your work so, so you can reward yourself with it. That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, so that was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was just pretty much part one of winning. <laughs> I love that. I picked some, like, I didn't mean to pick dark topics, but it's, like, I haven't really explored certain things. Um, and then, of course, you know, I end it on a happy note. Um, no, I'm, I'm, we're not, come on. This is, this is Chaff FM, Melly. We, we're, not, we're not limited to what we can talk about here. We can go anywhere with the conversation, and that's the beauty of this. This is radio. Um, this, is, this is diving into, you know, anything and everything in a way that that is digestible for everyone so that is we do here at FM. um i i think there's yeah that's very true i love you for that um i think there's another there's probably a very hidden topic that's not really discussed um so i i had an eating disorder seven years ago i I actually, I just didn't like my appearance. I hated my structure of my face. Um, I always, I like, I always thought at that time you had to be a size zero to t zero to two to be beautiful. And I, I used to work out very vigorous, vigorously. And one day I got really lightheaded and that was the moment i was like wow i need to bounce back from this yeah. so it was it was definitely very interesting to reintroduce foods that i ended up disliking yeah and slowly incorporate them again um sometimes you need that wake-up call you know yeah absolutely <laughs> So, like, fast forward, you know, to where you were then, to where you are now. I mean, you know, you're you're winning these competitions. Your your voice is so good, and and at like a you know, such a such a just amazing place in terms of how how uh, deep and and just different your sound is. Um, walk me through that, like. Was that something that was always with you or was that something you might have used as like, you know, maybe healing through some of this stuff is like, you know, really getting to, to get work out of your voice? Um, so I, I mean, mo some of us came on Meet Me because we didn't know what we were doing or we were on POF because we were looking for a blind date. <laughs> um, but no, I, um, you know, I, I found, uh, oh God, I'm going to cry because I see hoops in the comments. Um, <laughs> he's right though. We saw, love you. I saw Aaron here earlier too, so I don't know if he's still here. Um, no, but I I saw hoops on trending. One of the first ones on trending uh, in May in 2020. And I just mind you guys, I had no levels, nothing. <laughs> And I sang in his box. I sang Fix You by Coldplay, and I sang a song that I wrote about mental health. And then I didn't hear that he said, hey, we have our second wave of auditions this Friday. All I heard was auditions on Friday. And I went into that on a whim and then ended up making the top 15. And then, you know, hey. final three. I make it into the final three. I didn't win season six, but I returned as a judge. And then I just, it clicked in my head that singing, it really, um, the quote that I made during 2020 was, when words fall short, music speaks. Oh, that was good. Sorry, that got me. That was really good. <laughs> and I, 
I've discovered that you can tell so many stories and emotions behind songwriting or um, covers that you choose. Um, and it's just been a, it's been a major blessing just to be able to do that on a platform and tell people that they're not alone. Um, actually, I have a friend from the UK. I think he was experiencing some sort of a chest pain and he was on his way to the hospital and I was new. This is, guys, this is when I had like 78 views, okay? <laughs> but he came in and he said, I'm on my way to the hospital. Can you sing something by Adele? And I sang Someone Like You. And, you know, just to just be able to provide an escape for people that don't have that sure, off sure. of this platform, it means the world to me. And that's the type of win I take from this platform is providing a security blanket or support system that people don't have outside of here. Oh, I absolutely love that. And I think in, in our own unique ways, that's something like all of us contribute to, you know what I mean? Like whether it be through, through the gift of singing or, or through advice people give, or, you know, even just through being a friend. Um, I think that's like one of the, the biggest wins that we can all take away from, from a plot, you know, the platform like this. And uh, no, that's really inspiring to hear Melly. Well, I, I'm so honored that you asked me to be here. <laughs> yeah, no, you're seriously, you're, you're one of those types of people that uh, I just, I feel like everyone, you have this glowing energy that everyone can get something out of. And uh, it, you know, you, you really radiate positivity and um, just, uh, you know, have an amazing gift that you, you know, provide for the app. So um, I had to get you on. I didn't know how, how and when we were going to do it, but uh, I'm super, super honored that you were willing to take time out of your day and uh, we were able to get some chats in. And I feel like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, like, have, have you ever talked about those things um, on the app before? Because I didn't know any of that. I learned a lot tonight. No, it was my first time, wow. actually. Wow. Well, actually, no. Um, Top Badge Peach Nation, I actually, something compelled me to get into her box um, mm. a month mm. ago. Um, and she's had some patterns of seizures as well and a lot of immune system issues. And we just connected on a personal level. And I stayed in her box for almost an hour. And it was just like, wow. Um, it was just so amazing just knowing that you can relate to people that way yeah yeah and you never know what other people are going through you know what i mean that's the one thing um <clears throat> so last summer um i went to this camp it's called camp Kulabunga, and uh, i don't know if you ever heard of the the musical artist called grizz but um he's the one that that curates the camp um and it's like it's like a very limited thing. So there was 80 of us strangers that all came together for it. And it's basically like a four day wellness retreat where um, there's no phones. Like you have to, you have to literally have to turn in your phone. Like when you get there and um, it's That's crazy. Yeah. It's completely sober. Like no, no alcohol or anything. Um, nice. No technology whatsoever. We meditated every day. We sh like did team building stuff. But one of the things that we did on the second night, um, as we did this, this ceremony, it was called, um, fears in the fire. And basically what we did is we, we, all 80 of us would pick up a piece of, you know, wood or something off the ground or a piece of grass or something. And we would essentially tell a story about a fear that we have. And then you'd throw it in the fire, you know, getting rid of your fears, which in turn to tie it back to the topic is the number one way to, to allow yourself to start winning more is to, to free up some of that mental capacity. You know, your, your brain right. is like a hard drive. If you have a yeah. lot of, if you have a lot of stress built up and a lot of emotions towards things that you're bottling in, um, you know, you're not going to have that space to be able to really perform at, at peak level, which is required to win. Um, mm -hmm. So during this ceremony, we went, you know, when we were going around the room or not around the room, but around the campfire and everyone was like sharing these stories. I mean, the things that you heard from, you know, just, rough childhood upbringings to being with like abusive spouses and like um you know to, to hearing about you know suicides and and things all over the spectrum and, and not only to hear about it because sure we hear about it in the news you hear about it you know your friend of a friend of a friend but like hearing these people like spill these stories like from their own mouth like you just did here on chuff fm like 
it's so powerful and it, it really provides, I think, a lot of healing for people that in ways that no, no other um, form of anything, no other form of medium really can. You know what I mean? So thank right. you for opening yourself up and being vulnerable for that because um, yeah. it's really tough to do. And, and, you know, like we were saying, that's such a crucial part of, you know, progressing is, is I'm opening that I'm space. I'm curious, who else is still here? Daniel, I see you. Jeff, I see you. Hoops, I see you. Who else is still here? <laughs> they all left. <laughs> Sin, Sin, you don't count. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, I leave you with this type of exercise, and I'm just going to do it right in front of you. So, and obviously, Chaff knows what shape this is, but everybody, what shape am I holding? <gasps> I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I would guess a heart. I mean, okay, Marcus, like heart. thank you. Looks like a heart. So what does it look like right now? Do you see anything wrong with it? Not at all. Okay, so and this this is a very powerful exercise and I think um I think I'm going to do this in a few people's boxes if they let me. So this okay. is the first one that I'm doing it in. So I'm going to do whatever I want to this heart. Oh my God, she's crumpling up the heart. She's ripping the heart. The heart is getting ripped. It's like my ex-girlfriend did to me, Melly. Jessica, hello. If you were to do this, oh, no. if you if you were to do this to somebody's heart or a plain piece of paper, and I said, fix it, somebody is going to try to iron it manually with their hands smooth out things, tape it, staple it, whatever. Sure. I leave you guys with this. What you guys say and do will leave a forever impact Ooh. on somebody's mind and heart. Ooh. Wow, with the visual and everything. Not only that, Sorry, did I, did I cut you off? Go ahead. Well, I mean, the last thing I was going to say, to the other uprising top badges in the comments section, to the current ones, to the uprising streamers that are just hitting their first millies, provide that safe space, that appropriate space for people that don't have it outside of here. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, that's what it's about, you know, op opening yourself up to, to the community in ways that, you know, other people can't and, and sh you know, showcasing what you have to offer. I love that. And that's how we win too, because really like giving yourself the space to be you, you know, I, I mean, I know for me, uh, you know, I've been in media for, for a lot of years, but um, for me, when the pandemic hit, it was like all of a sudden I, I wasn't able to go to the studio anymore. I wasn't able to be in front of people. I had to do it all from home. And, and this uh, app definitely was like a window um, into the world again in a weird way. Because, you know, yeah, we got Instagram and, you know, we got other social media platforms, but um, nothing like this to where it's, you know, you're interacting with new people all the time. Um, so I, I think that's a crucial way of like letting your true color show is, you know, getting to getting to be on that that stage of unfamiliar people every single mm -hmm. day. And that's how we win too, because then you get to showcase your U.S. You, which we always say on Chuff FM, you got to be the U.S. You, because only you can be you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it, Melly. Thank you so much for sharing these stories today and coming on the show. And thank you for having me. It was um, it was a really big refresher, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I had no idea it was going to go there, and I'm, I'm so glad that it did because that was, that was definitely just a really nice change of pace. So thank you, Millie. Of course. You're guys. amazing. I feel like and switch on over to gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone knows Melly, but favorite Melly if you don't know Melly. 
<laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. We love you, Melly. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, oh, 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 there it is. There it is. There it is. I was like trying to play an outro song so we could go through these Instagram reads real quick before the end of the show. Um, first of all, thank you all for being here. Once again, I'm Choff. Any new friends, hi and welcome. I saw Jacob popped in. What's up, Jacob? Jacob's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks, so stick around for that. Super excited for it. Next week on the show, the special Valentine's Day edition of Choff FM. Um, am I allowed to talk about this? Well, I'm gonna, because we got the king of love on Meet Me here. Uh, Jacob, thank you. We got the king of Meet Me coming in. It, it's going to be Blake Premier um, on the show. Blake's first time on Chuff FM. He was on On It With Chuff, which was the, the former name of my show back before we kind of switched things up and started doing them like this. <laughs> uh, but I'm super, super pumped for Blake to be on the king of love. So we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff uh, and his quest for love on Valentine's Day. If you haven't seen his show, Love Quest, check it out Thursday night right here on the app. Also on uh, next week's show is going to be Quinn and JT. They do the cooking show on Monday night here on the app. And they got literally like married from the app. So I got all kinds of stuff I'm going to ask them. I'm not huge into the whole Valentine's Day lovey-dovey nonsense, but I got to say for this one, we're diving in. We're diving in. Um, so the IG reads for the day. I, I put a little little thing up on Instagram. Like, how are you going to win the day? Because that was the theme today. We talked about winning the day. Grand finale talked about just connecting with people and, you know, the importance of that. Melly shared um, overcoming some of her hardships, which is so great. I asked my Instagram poll in the story, which I do every week. So follow me at Meet Choff if you ever want to be a part of that. Um, let's see here. Blair Woods said... Ex Accept what is for me and pass what is not. Namaste, biatch. I love that because um, I'm the type of person, you know, I take almost every opportunity I get, even when they're not the best sometimes. I uh, I don't know. It's one of those things. I feel like if I say no, someone's never going to ask me to do something again. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I'll get like a gig opportunity that comes up and it's like, okay, I could do this. It's not like the most glamorous thing ever, but I end up taking it, you know, because I just don't like to say no. I think sometimes it's important, but I also think it's super, super important to uh, occasionally say no. Uh, shout out to Moore. He said he's living purposefully. You know, you got to live purposefully. Shout out to Moore. The Pet Show Tuesdays, 11 p.m. Eastern time. Check him out. Uh, Moore is incredible, and that guy, yeah, he definitely knows how to live with purpose. He's, he's, Definitely, definitely not all talk on that one. Uh, Corey says, doing what I love. Shout out to Corey, my guy. Kim Possible, conquering food poisoning. You angel. I'm so sorry that you have to deal with that right now. Um, JoJo said her morning routine, which I mentioned before. You know, my, my morning routine has been vital in terms of feeling like I'm on top of life lately and, and really feeling like I'm working towards something and, and getting on top of my goals. Um, so shout out to everyone who gave feedback on the show tonight. Um, thank you to Melly B. Thank you to Grand Finale. Once again, if you don't know them, you got to show them both some love. Also, I want to shout out everyone that came through and dropped love in the stream. Brooke Falls, Jameson, Poppy Stark, John, Hoops. Who else? Killy was in here for a bit. Killy, my girl. LT Cowboy Buck, thanks for the uh, the 94.7 Hits FM plug. Real quick, shameless shout out. If anyone's got anything you want to shout out, anything you want to promote, uh, drop it in the comments real quick. If not, no worries. Jacob Williams, thank you, my guy. I appreciate you. Um, I know Wynn wants us all to buy Dodgecoin from him. Wynn, are you missing the headlines? No one's using Robin Hood anymore, bro. No one. No one. <laughs> Have you not been watching the news? I don't know. Or Twitter. Not even the news. Just Twitter. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Poppy Stark. I appreciate that. Um, what was I going to say on that? Oh, speaking of Dodgecoin though, one of my buddies made like, like literally he bought it like years ago, spent a thousand dollars. He's like about to retire next week. That's how much money he spent, um, <laughs> which I think is absolutely awesome. So Valentine's day next week on the show is going to be great. I can't wait to, to see what it's all about. Um, I haven't been going out much because you know, COVID and, uh, I live in Michigan in Detroit. So the lockdowns here are crazy. I'm finally going to go out this weekend because the lockdowns are officially lifted. So I'm going to have all those stories on Monday. Um, so get ready for that. In the meantime, 
My dude Jameson is hosting Gratitude right now. If you want to pop on over to his stream, check him out. He is uh, you know, going to definitely feed off the energy we talked about today in the show, which is winning. This guy talks about gratitude in life. Um, super inspiring person um, who gets amazing guests. Uh, oh, oh, we got another plug. Let's see here. Jacob Williams, my stand-up special, Unemotional Roller Coaster, free on YouTube and also on audio platforms. Yo, Jacob, I'm actually I'm checking that out tonight. I got I to gotta really go through some of uh, Jacob's content before he comes on in a couple weeks so we can get an idea of, uh, of what he's working with here. I, I've, I've definitely uh, watched some Wild and Out that you've been a part of, but I've never checked your own solo stuff. So I'm excited to get to that. And uh, we're going to get uh, him on in just a couple of weeks, two weeks now. Um, so get ready for that. Anything I'm missing? No, I think we got it all. Um, as always, if you ever have topic ideas, you want to DM me on uh, Instagram. You want to be a part of the show, hit me up at Meet Choff or my real life one is at Hey Choff. Um, just hit me up on there. Um, I'm always taking feedback on the shows. I'm always taking topic ideas and I'm, every week we're bringing on new guests. So if you got something you think would resonate with the show, hit me up. I would love for you to be like going through your day and have something crazy happen to you at the grocery store and be like, oh my gosh, we got to talk about this on Choff FM. That's like my goal is for those real life moments to come out. Cause that's something that radio has always brought that no other medium really can, which is real time, um, you know, emotions and reactions and, and stories and situations, um, like, like from the person's mouth who experienced them. And that's what always has drawn me to it. If you didn't know, I do this show Mondays at 9 PM Eastern time every single week, but I also host a real radio show every weeknight. So Monday nights were on Me, Me, Scout, POF, whatever app you're tuning in on, any of the other affiliates, and 94.7 Hits FM. And then every other weekday, I'm on 7 p.m. to midnight, just on 94.7 Hits FM. I host nights with um, music in between, so you know, you'll be listening, all the jams, and then it's me, and we get to talk. Uh, oh my God, Buttons, thank you for the goose. Um, so yeah, that's every single weeknight, uh, 7 p.m. to midnight on 94.7 Hits FM in Montreal. Oh, I was off on that one. <laughs> uh, you can always tune in there with the link in my bio. Uh, listen online, listen anywhere. And honestly, we're going to keep going with this show because we've already we've had so many interesting stories in the past few weeks. Um, if you missed it, in the past couple of weeks, we had Moron. We had uh, Juice Baby JoJo on. We had, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start forgetting if I, uh, I, I won't name names, but we had a ton of great people. Go to my uh, Instagram story if you want to hear that. Uh, Chris Casper, Katie B were both on. Um, every single Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, meet me here. It's Chuff FM. Head over to Jameson stream, check out Gratitude, and uh, I'll catch you later. Love you. Goodbye. Okay,